Hey everyone! Nailed this the first time. Don't worry about it. We are Local Chat. This is episode 9. I'm Will Crosby. Joining me is a man who thinks skyscrapers are just an elevator to heaven. It's Ian Gibson. All I'm saying is, like, you can see some of it above the surface, but how much is below the surface? It's so true. Also joining us is a man who loves microtransactions as much as he loves Fortnite. It's Zach from Save Data. How's it going? <laughs> Oh, it's so good. I just got done getting my first Victory Royale of the evening. Wow. Oh, got that new Chun-Li skin. Oh, boy. It, it makes it real hard to play because I can't focus while looking at oh, her boy. backside. <laughs> I can. I, I know this is a joke, but I am surprised by how thirsty those dances and avatars are in Fortnite for what is basically a kid's game. I mean, have you seen kids much. these days? <laughs> That's true. They're That's true. They're on TikTok from age three <laughs> so they're ready for anything at that point oh <laughs> uh, folks lots of things have happened this week lots of things have also happened this week but before we happen this week and we talk about it we got to talk about what we have been playing and starting us off this week we're going to be talking to one man named ian gibson ian what have you been playing you know i haven't been playing one game a lot i i know we've talked about it previously but um I finally uh, bit the bullet. I s s took the drug. I did all the analogies. I started playing Valheim. Um, mm. And it's very good. You know, I'm really enjoying it. Um, I just kind of wanted to touch on some of the things that are really striking me, which is it's it's crazy how the tech progression works. You know, uh, I'm assuming both of you guys have been playing Valheim. I have not touched it at all. Oh, I, I, I'm wanting to jump jump in after seeing how popular it is. And I'm, I'm curious, if, mm -hmm. if, from your perspective, as someone who's kind of joined late, so to speak, what you're yeah. finding enjoyable about it. So so part of the problem that I had was I missed the boat and I was like, OK, well, now I either need to wait like six months until there's a big patch and I get in mm -hmm. or I go in now and I'm behind my friends. But what I did was I bullied my friends, namely Will. <laughs> into completely restarting the server just so that I could oh. join at the same level as them. Wow. Um, I, I think I think it's definitely worth jumping into. I would say go ahead and jump in now, even though it's yeah. a brand new early access game. There's more than enough there for you to have fun with. Um, mm -hmm. I think some of the things that it does really well for me is I typically don't like survival games because they uh, tend to just punish you. They're like, guess what? You starve to death. Mm -hmm. Guess what? You know, you have all these different punishments, but this game doesn't put too many punishments on you. It just offers incentives for you to do things. And it does mm. it really well. Um, the other thing I really like about it that I'm actually finding really interesting is the tech tree, because basically it, they do it almost like a Zelda game where they essentially give you a new item or give you access to a new item or tool. And now all of a sudden there are areas or objects or things that you can now interact with or explore because you have that tool. Hmm. Um, they don't do a really good job of telling you which tool to get next and how to get it. Yeah. But it's it's definitely like once you beat the first boss, then you get the equipment that lets you make the pickaxe for the first time. Well, now that you have the pickaxe, now you can mine copper. And then you've got copper and tin, so now you can do bronze. Now you can do bronze weapons. So it sounds like a standard tech tree, but the way that they unroll it is really, is really nice. It's almost like a single-player Zelda-type game where they're like, we're going to give you a boomerang now, which is going to let you hit that switch over there, so now you can solve this dungeon and get past it to get to the next item. So it's it's really interesting. I would I would definitely recommend oh. it. Yeah, it sounds um, really cool. I, I didn't didn't know that part of it. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's, uh, I think the best, the way I described it to Will the other day while we were playing is basically, I feel like 90% of games just emulate other games in that when it comes down to mechanical or design decisions, they say, okay, what are other games doing? Let's just mm -hmm. make that same design decision. Mm -hmm. And it's it's rare to have a game that doesn't do that, that they decide to make interesting choices. So things like Apex Legends, where they introduced a ping system and respawn in a battle royale. Oh, yeah. So and good. it was like, yeah, it's like it's like, great. You didn't do the typical thing. You innovated. And mm -hmm. Valheim is doing that with a lot of their choices in what is a huh. very crowded survival multiplayer crafting space and i really appreciate that they are taking those risky creative innovative design choices and i think that's what's really sticking me with, with yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to find a like a lot of games just try to copy not iterate and i feel like mm -hmm. this yep. is a shining example like you said with apex is just iterating like especially <clears throat> the food system where 
if you eat, it's only benefits. It's not if you don't eat, you're uh, dying all the time or losing out on things. It's just like you have way more health and way more stamina if you choose to eat. But I'm not like freaking out when I don't have food because I don't have to quickly get somewhere to get food to not die. Mm. Um, it's, it's not very starve. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And it's even... I think even Minecraft kind of figured that out where they used to have it when you ran out of food, your hearts would go all the way down and you'd die, which later on mm -hmm. they added, it just goes down to like three hearts. So it's kind of mm -hmm. that same system where they're like, instead of just copying Minecraft, they're like, what did Minecraft change to make it better? What can we iterate? And then again on that. And even like the combos of food stuff is, is really neat. Like you have three slots for food. You can eat three different types of food and they'll like, you watch your like food drain and stuff. So mm. very cool. It's a very good game. What are the three different yeah. types of food? Uh, you can just have three different types of food at oh, a time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but the food I thought, I thought you were saying the like... game has like three different kinds of food. It's like you have spicy <laughs> oh, food, sweet food, and <laughs> Eat the spicy food, you get fire yeah. breath. Yeah, yeah. That's um, crazy. Yeah. But it is interesting. Like they literally have a visual representation. They don't explain it very well. Will Will had to yeah. explain it to me, but it's basically like a representation of your stomach. So it's like you're putting food on top of your stomach and then it's slowly draining. Okay. Um, and so it's, it's like, you know, you're eating food and you want it to give you a bunch of X, you want, to, you want it to give you a bunch of health points when you eat it, but at the same time, you want it to last a long time. So it doesn't, it doesn't drain, you know, you want to mm. be eating oatmeal instead of Pringles because the oatmeal is going to last longer. It's going to stick to your ribs, you know, but like Pringles might be good in a pinch. Like yeah, if you need exactly. to eat it. So I love, yeah. I love Pringles. So, um, Sounds yeah, like that's all I've been playing. Fantastic game. I highly recommend it. As somebody who was hesitant, it's definitely uh, worth how, how much is it? I think it's twenty bucks. Yeah, it's only twenty bucks. Oh my god, are you kidding? Okay, yeah, then I'll I'll definitely pick this up. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. good. The only thing is, I I would definitely recommend playing with friends. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, if you really want to punish yourself, you could probably play solo. It's not impossible to do solo, but I feel like a lot of it is experiencing it and hopping in a boat with friends and kind of doing these journeys and being like, oh look what I found, look what I found, and I feel like. This has multiplayer servers, has dedicated servers. That's the way to do it. Could you could you see this game working as like a role playing experience? Yeah, definitely. Okay. I could definitely okay. see people role playing it. Okay, cool. yeah, yeah, it's an idea. Yeah, that's serious, possibly. <laughs> that's all oh, I've been yeah. playing though, because I can't um, play video games without trying to make content for it. <laughs> I my you know I get the stream syndrome where I'm like, oh, I should play this game for the first time. No, I should stream it, and then I mm -hmm. never play it ever. Um, mm -hmm. and that's why I would yes. like with, uh, when I started Dragon Quest eight, I'm like, it's a 65 hour game. I'm not going to stream it. And I still feel guilty mm -hmm. when I, every time I boot it up, <laughs> I'm like, no, don't feel guilty. Um, mm -hmm. Ian, I'm very happy you're playing Valheim with us despite Thank you. you making us completely restart, but we really weren't that far along. And I feel like you didn't believe us until you got to the point where we were at and you were like, Oh, they're really not that far along. Um, uh, but the other part of it was I didn't have to convince you at all. I was just like, what if the only way I would do it is if we restarted the server and you guys are like, yeah, we could do that. And I was like, okay, okay. I, I watched the tape back. I am the one who suggested restarting. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. So it's 100% on me. Yeah. Um, anyways, uh, Zach, what have you been playing? So uh, last week I completed a game called uh, Paradise Killer, which I believe came out last year uh it's one in in like the murder mystery kind of court casey genre Ooh. um which is a genre i love i mean i love phoenix Wright, i love danganronpa i love uh 999 that all, yeah. all those games are great but what this game does it, it does some it, it, it similar to valheim it tries to introduce new things into the genre some of which are very successful, some of which are very not successful. Um, hmm. for, for, for the major thing, it's open world. Uh, the, the, the game sets up a really fascinating universe and the world building is great. Um, the TLDR is basically you are this, uh, there, there is an organization that worships these gods who are like kind of genocidal they they like want to kill humans to gain power but they can also give humans power so they're this like small group of humans that worship them they jump into a pocket dimension because the humans humans start rebelling against the gods and killing them this wow. group says no we, we need to save the gods and it's been like they basically created a dimension where they can never die 
Mm. And so these humans have been worshiping these gods for literally a thousand years and trying to bring them back to life by sacrificing more humans. It's so complicated, <laughs> but it, it gets kind of drawn out in an interesting way. You play this investigator f who works for this organization that worships the gods and you have been exiled for, I think it's actually a million days exactly. And then Oof. you get brought back into this society because the leaders of this, this organization have been all murdered. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's like, you have to figure out who did it. And there's like 10 people who are on the island still that are members of the organization. They're the only ones who could have done it. And it seems at first very, very obviously set up that like, oh, there's this one person who most likely did it. And pretty much off the bat, your character's like, mm, that seems a little too convenient. But you have to start digging. And, and it's very cool that you get to walk around in this open world. It's also very fucking annoying when you want to talk to one person <laughs> and they're on the other side of the goddamn island and it's going to oh, take yeah. you five minutes to walk to them or you can fast travel. The fast travel requires you to find one of the predetermined fast travel points and then pay in-game money mm -mm. to do mm -mm. it. It I'm out. It, it 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 gets very annoying. It's not too bad, but there are definitely times where I was like, "Man, it, it, this game could have been four hours shorter if they didn't do this." Yeah. Uh, and it it feels like it would have been better for that. Um, the other amazing thing this game does is that the end of the game, basically at any point in the game, you can say, "Okay, I, I'm ready to go to trial," and everybody gets called, and there's like this impartial judge character. And you, you, they're leading the trial, but you essentially get to say, hey, this person is guilty because X, Y, Z, and I'm going to present this evidence to prove that. Mm -hmm. And you can do that right from the jump. You can, they, they can say, okay, go start investigating. And you can just turn around and say, okay, I'm ready to convict somebody. <laughs> or you can wait and, and go through the whole thing. But no matter what, the game isn't like, oh, you failed. You didn't catch the right person. The game says like, okay, that's the truth because that's who you convicted. Uh, th there is obviously oh, a wow. canon. There is a canon truth to the game of like, if you find all of the clues, you'll be like, okay, this is what happened. But mm -hmm. you don't necessarily have to land on that, and the game will still be like, okay, then the people you convicted die, and the people who maybe is the actual mastermind behind this this murder gets to live. And you didn't, you you, you gave we gave you all the clues, but you didn't find them. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. it, it, it's cool. I I, I like. This is this this studio's first game. They've worked on other stuff, but it's primarily two guys, and I'm very excited to see what they do next. I was um, I was just thinking, could, do you think they could make an a detective game in the style of Outer Wilds, where I would you, love that you keep resetting like a court day, and mm. you're just you like pick one court day to go to someone's house and figure out all the stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you wake up like groundhog day, wake up the next day and you're like, Oh, I got to go somewhere else. And like in hopefully, the vein of outer wilds. Hopefully that's kind of what 12 minutes becomes whenever that, that game fucking oh. comes out. But I'm really I excited for that game. That, that one they stopped and restarted because they got famous people to be in it. Right? Yes. They got, yeah. uh, I almost said Gary Busey, not Gary Busey, but <laughs> other guy who had the, creepy face always plays villains uh, uh alan rickman neither they brought uh, him back the they brought, yeah he's <laughs> back from the dead Hello, the role Papa. he was born to play <laughs> page 374 uh <laughs> what that was is pretty good <laughs> christopher walken what is... no well, you uh, know he, he murdered him he, he plays the uh the the green goblin willem dafoe Willem Dafoe. You know, yeah, that's the yeah. first person oh. I thought of when you said creepy face. Yeah, yeah. I should have got it when you said villain, because Willem Dafoe. <laughs> yeah. That's how it, he it got almost... casted. Yeah. yeah. Are you a villain, Dafoe? <laughs> 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 Enemy the bad guy. That is his literal name. <laughs> oh, that's very good. Um, what else have you been playing? I see you have another game on our notes. Yes. Uh, I just played through Maquette, which is this month's PlayStation Plus game for PlayStation 5. Uh, it is kind of a perspective puzzle game in the vein of, um, God, what was that game called? The Witness. Mm, no, it, it's like like you have to move stuff around and depending on your perspective, like they get bigger or smaller. Oh, Super Liminal? Space. Super Liminal. It's kind of like Super Liminal. Uh, 
it has this cool mechanic where like the maquette is essentially like a dome and you can look into this like model of the area that you're into and if you interact with things in the tiny model things in your oh. human sized world move around as well i like that oh wow and even in the distance you can see over the walls and you can see like an extra extra large version of your of of like your surroundings so if you mm -hmm. like pick up a block you'll see the you'll see, you'll pick up the tiny block you'll see the regular size block and then way off in the distance you'll see like a mountain size block wow. uh, moving which it has some really cool moments mm. once you kind of get past the like ooh there is some like really frustrating parts. Um, there are also some puzzles that are like, fuck you. Like <laughs> that was, that was dirty. Uh, I don't think I would have been able to get that without like looking it up. And, and there was a point where I was just like, listen, I wanted to get through this game in one night. Uh, I'm a little drunk yeah. right now and it's like midnight or, or 1 a.m. I was like, let me just, how do I beat this game? Uh, it has a story to it, which is cool. It's telling like a relationship that starts like, blossoms and then ends mm -hmm. and like kind of recovery past that uh actually voice acted by really great uh talent uh bryce dallas howard voices the the woman oh. in the relationship um it, it's it's like part of me wants to be like this is amazing part of me is like eh, it's kind of it's it's kind of like we've all seen 500 days of summer like we get it you know yeah. you can at the same time like i just got out of a relationship a few months ago that was pretty serious and so like there were some moments where i was like mm, yeah it hits a little hard that hits that hits a nerve <laughs> um overall it's free on playstation plus if you have it get it otherwise uh i don't know if i'd recommend it like i there there were two times in particular where i had to restart Ooh. a section because oh. i fucked myself like mm. i put a puzzle piece out of bounds on mistake and i was like oh is there a checkpoint? And there wasn't, there, there is no checkpoints. So you just load back to like a chapter start, which doesn't yeah. take, two, it takes like five minutes to get back to, but it was like, it happened twice in the same spot. And I was like, okay, uh, this happens one more time. I'm probably not going to finish this game. Oh yeah. That stinks. But it, but it does, it does like each of the chapters introduces like a cool new thing. Um, so th there are definitely some parts where the puzzle, like once I figured out what the puzzle was trying to get me to do, I was like, Oh, that's pretty <laughs> fucking clever. Okay. Okay, Maquette. Okay. Yeah, that sounds nice. That sounds, that sounds um, exciting. I, I, yeah, it's... it's... <clears throat> I, 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 mean, I feel like I haven't played a good, like, puzzle game in a while. Like, I tried that Call of the Sea game, and that one, the puzzles ended up being, like simpler than I, I kept being like oh it wants me to do this it wants me to do that and they like would give you a bunch of information but only the base level of information is needed to solve the puzzle uh, so i ended mm -hmm. up getting stuck on a couple puzzles because i was over complicating it you with like ahead. more information than it needed uh -huh. um but i feel like yeah i just i need a good puzzle game it's this the thing where like I think this is very good. It's, it's a first person puzzle game. I think it's, it's good. It's just like you have games like the witness and God, what is the robot one? I never fucking remember that. I love. Oh, was it Ro turn puzzle or something like that? No, you, you it's, you, you take, yeah, you Talos play as a principle. robot. Tell us principle. Yes. That I'm is like today. one of my <laughs> favorite yeah. puzzle games of all time. And I think that is miles. I've better always than wanted this, to play but... it. It's incredible. Uh, has one of the best stories in a puzzle game I've ever played. Hmm. Made me seriously consider how I think about artificial intelligence. Ooh. So, kill them. Highly recommend it. That's what I think. Kill, kill them all. Delete the programs. That's awesome. Um, next up is Will. That's me. Folks, I've been playing Dragon Quest VIII some more. Uh, I'm kind of... St I've stopped because A, Valheim, and mm. B... Uh, I have to grind a bunch of levels and I haven't had a chance to like sit down and just like play a bunch, fight a bunch of things to level up and then sit down. So yeah. it's, I'm kind of stuck at this point and it's really frustrating because I mentioned this last week, but every time I look up a leveling guide for Dragon Quest VIII, it is all stupid nerds trying to level up after the main story to get like the extra main story <laughs> stuff. And they're like, yeah, once you mm -hmm. beat the game, you get to go to the metal slimes. I'm like, no, I just want to level up now. Um, 
And also the the FAQ I was following at first was recommending like weapons to use and stuff. And then they just stopped doing it. And I'm like, no, I was relying on you, sir. Um, so <laughs> I, I have to find a better, a better guide. Um, other than that, uh, I started playing Assassin's Creed Black Flag again. Ooh. Um, I don't know why it was, it was like nine bucks on the Xbox store. And I was like, you know what? I'll, it was on sale. And I was like, you know, I'll play this game again. I, I, I think I mentioned this. I tweeted about this, but I have 64 hours in that game on steam. And I don't remember a single second of it other than maybe the sea shanties. Um, Honestly, that, that sounds like an Assassin's Creed game. You yeah. just sit down and you play it. That's pretty yeah. Much and then I'm playing it. And I'm like, oh, what if I played all the Assassin's Creed game to really understand the story? And then I stopped myself and I put the gun away and I said, no, I'll just play Black Flag. <laughs> um, it's good. I, I forgot how good they made the real world sections in that game where you're a research analyst at a video game company and it's first person and it's kind of eerie yeah. and it gives you this thriller vibe of not the music video, but the genre. And you're like, it's like this tech thriller. And you're like, you're like, Oh, am I a plant in this place? And they do a really neat job with that. Um, hmm. The sailing, I actually got caught up a little bit because I'm so used to sea of thieves and even Valheim where the turning of the wheel is relative to like a real ship where you have to kind of like turn the wheel and then turn it back before you fully turn to kind of pitch the mm -hmm. ship and everything like an actual rudder. And in Assassin's Creed Black mm -hmm. Flag, it is like a car turning. So you don't have to do that. And I keep <laughs> oh. like overcompensating and not doing it. Um, that's fun. But I, I just needed like a good open world game. Like I went to the first town and I just went around and did everything. I was like, mm. I don't want to do the story. I just want to explore the city. So that's mm -hmm. fun. Uh, I, I'm really digging. I don't. I don't think I'm gonna end up beating it or anything. Who knows? But especially like being drunk on Friday nights, you're like, I want to play a game, and it's like, I'll play Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Black Flag, and that'll be fun. Um, other than that, Sid Meier's Assassin's Creed <laughs> Pirates. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Although uh, apparently. So as a kid, my brothers and I played this game called Sea Dogs, which is a pirate like RPG sort of game. <sighs> and I had never heard, I just assumed it was like a one-off sort of thing. It is one of the most popular RPGs in, I believe, Russia. What? And it, the last game in the series came out in 2012, and it's still being updated on Steam. And they just had a huge expansion pack come out. This this guy I actually want to try to get on the podcast. He he's I can't think of his name right now, but he he wrote the he helped write the CRPG book that came out. Uh, mm -hmm. They they're updating it right now, but he was tweeting about it, and uh, I was reading all about it. And I apparently the English patch finally just mm -hmm. came out. It's like it's sea it's sea dogs like choose your this, choose your life or something. That's a terrible. Which name. is a, uh, I think it's just translated. So this looks in depth. It looks it. There was actually a there. Look at this. I fucking I I was looking through just screenshots of screen Sea Dogs game, and on the third row there's a fucking box art of the Xbox Pirates of the Caribbean game. Yeah, they and made that, that legitimately. Oh, they made it. Yeah, yeah. The the same developer. The the third it, one was turned into a Pirates of the Caribbean game. It looks exactly like it, and that game was way better than a fucking licensed game about Pirates <laughs> of the Caribbean had any business I, being. You know what? I think I played it now that you're saying that. I wonder... Oh, I should... Man, we should start a movie game show where you just play bad movie games, but then some of them are good. Uh, Ian, you have so paused many, on my OBS Ninja. And I'm not yeah, sure yeah, I'm going to win it. Oh, okay, cool. As long as you know... <laughs> The more you know, folks. <laughs> like the face was just looking down and like kind of self defeat. <laughs> it it kind of worked because I thought he was looking stuff up on his phone, and I was like, he's very still. <laughs> just don't be, I'm gonna refresh OBS Ninja. So okay, just being stoic. Um, the other game I have been playing, of course, not of course, Life Two, the game of Life Two. Uh, I saw if, if life is so good, why isn't there a sequel? <laughs> yeah. Life the sequel. Uh, uh, one death. of the streamers, Karen watches, was playing this, and she was like, "Hey, it's only ten bucks on Steam. Can you buy it? Because I don't want to pay for it." And of course, I bought it. <laughs> uh, and we played a little bit of it. It's a good like hanging out with people kind of game. 
you pass the controller around, you can drink during it because it's not complicated. It's essentially the game life, but in video game form. I don't know why it's the game of life too. Everything's it's really not. <laughs> it's just a different version of the game. So I don't wow. know. And plus, they like monetize the heck out of it. And they're like, oh, you can buy these other worlds for $6 each. Um, this kind of sprouted. We, we've been playing like the, uh, the Monopoly on Xbox and Scrabble and Trivial Pursuit, which all mm-hmm. of the knowledge in Trivial Pursuit is from, I think it was 2013. So it's like oh. you have to like try to remember pop culture from two, like oh, topical God. pop culture from 2013. It's very difficult. Um, but it, it was genuinely fun. Life 2, uh, I, I don't know if it's actually worth $10. Um, if I if I had played it, I, I probably... Actually, I wonder if I played it enough to return it on Steam. Oh my <laughs> god, a fucking ringing endorsement of Life 2 over wow. here. I, I did that with a game recently, and I was like, I'm glad this is a thing. Because I, I, I can't even remember what game it was. Anyways, uh, yeah, Life 2, but yeah... Mostly Dragon Quest, a little bit of Chrono Trigger. We streamed that the other day, uh, but mostly Valheim. Valheim is, it's a sweet baby boy. And it's, it's see, it's compounded with, it's a very engaging game. And also, uh, it's a good podcast game. So, mm-hmm. like, half the, when I'm playing alone, I can listen to podcasts. As soon as someone else is online, I'm like, oh, can we Discord so we can do things? Um, mm-hmm. And, like, figure stuff out. Uh, and it's only 500 megabytes or 600 megabytes, which is insane to me. Wow. Uh, when yep. Call of Duty is over 500 on PS4s now. Yep. Yep. <gasps> uh, the future's a nightmare, folks. And speaking of a nightmare, let's go into what I like to call the news. I don't have a song ready. News, 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 news. You want you you to play a song? If you'd like to play, yeah, a, yeah let's get a new, fresh new okay, news song. Here we, here we go. Here we go. Okay. We're gonna, we're gonna. Here's the news. We're talking about news. It's gaming news. What's up, news? I, I don't know why I couldn't think of a fucking word to rhyme with news. That was great. I'm going to clip that and good. use it for every episode now. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you shouldn't Please have done it then. <laughs> no, it's good. You can use that. <laughs> oh, I was I wasn't asking permission. Folks, it's time for the news. Um, I figured since he's our guest and I haven't read any of these articles yet, uh, Zach, is there anything you want to talk about? Hmm. Uh I mean I'm trying to think if there's something we didn't talk about on Around the Monitor, or if there is something we can I can just, you know, double dip. Uh yeah, let let's talk about Epic buying a Media Tonic because I think that is kind of an interesting discussion um, mm-hmm. on our show around the monitor, which just happened. Uh, we go live every Twitch every, every Thursday night at seven thirty p.m. <laughs> Eastern Time on Twitch TV. Oh yeah, don't wait for the plug section. Do it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we we <laughs> we uh, we're talking about you know at least one of the people on the show was saying like, oh, Fall Guys dead game, haha. Maybe this will give it some new life. I definitely think this is going to breathe new life into Fall Guys, uh, particularly because Epic has the lineage of hosting a live service game in such a major way with Fortnite. I think one of the major reasons we've seen such a sharp decline in Fall Guys is, one, the the very slow drip feed of content, and two... Yeah. The fact that their skins, apart from a few standouts of like, oh, we got Doom Guy. Oh, you can dress your bean up as Cuphead, which is like, okay, Horrifying. yeah, like that's cool. But it's not, it's not fucking Chun Li's ass in Fortnite. <laughs> and now, and now, yep. it's fucking epic. They can just be like, hey, we're going to put a skin in Fortnite the same day it's going to drop in Fall Guys. I don't know. Maybe even have fucking cross buy for skins. That would Ooh. be fucking crazy a weird idea but uh epic call me you can't use that without my permission now um yeah i think i think this is just going to be you know huge money in the bank for for media tonic which will give them more money to essentially pump out content at a much faster rate which will hopefully get people coming back especially with the game coming to xbox and switch later this year uh we talked about it. I assume this will also become free to play. 
at least on Epic. Um, yeah. And I think they will have cross play or at least try to. Um, yeah. And did then, they, yeah, I'll just just all this. <clears throat> did they disclose the price? No, I no. don't think so. Oh, okay. What do you think? I imagine because 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 we, we the trivia question for the week was uh, how many copies did Fall Guys sell on PC and it was eleven million. Wow. So uh, it's not like Mediatonic is hurting for money. Yeah. Plus, Epic has money to burn, so it was probably yeah. Oh, yeah. probably more than they honestly needed to spend, which was probably a lot already. Mm-hmm. So, which good for them, and I suppose also good for uh, Devolver Digital, who I'm sure is in some way making off on 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 this as the uh, yep. publisher. That's true. Yep. Uh, great. Thank you for updating us on that. Ian, anything... You, uh, that sounded more sarcastic than I meant to be. Um, <laughs> hey, thanks for the fucking thanks update. Thanks for the update, <laughs> Double <laughs> Dipper. Um, Ian, is there anything you want to talk about? Yeah, I want to talk about... Um, yeah. I want to get a little bit tech nerdy. And I also want to talk about a problem that all of us have had, which is the crazy, ridiculous load times in Grand Theft Auto Online. Oof. Um, Hate him. So... They're awful. It's it's honestly one of the reasons why I stopped playing that game. Was it's the reason why I never played it. It's, I heard it's the load like, times are bad, and I just never never downloaded it. They're so bad. It's literally from they're you awful. starting the game to you getting into an online matches. Will hold me to this. I it's I would say four to seven minutes. Yeah. Oh Wait, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. It's that bad? <laughs> it's that bad. Hundred percent. Red fuck? Dead Red Dead Two online loads way faster. Yeah. So, anyways, um, An eight year so old somebody, game. Yeah. So basically an amateur uh, game developer in a way or somebody who likes to look at software source code was able to use a whole bunch of tools to benchmark and reverse engineer the uh, code that was running while GTA Online was loading. And long story short, they basically came down to... uh, Let me see if I can explain this. So... Essentially, the game is getting a list of verified items from the server. You know, like these are the 36,000 items that you are allowed to have in this game, right? Mm. And then it was taking that list and copying it to a different list. But every time it did it, it would check both lists to make sure there was not a duplicate. So by the time you got to like item 30,000, it would add it to the list and then it would check all 29,000 other items in both lists and go, yep, not a duplicate, and then add it. Oh. And then it was also doing another process after that to turn that list into usable game code. And so long story short, this guy comes in here and he basically used his reverse engineered code to change the process and to not necessarily change the whole list to list to game code process, but essentially to uh, make it less of a performance hog, to optimize it. So performing roughly the same function, but it's no longer using horrible code, quite frankly. And he cut the loading times by 70%. It's crazy. It's insane. It's, there's two wow. things that are insane about this. Number one, there's a bad coder out there somewhere who made this. Um, quite frankly, <laughs> that's understandable. I've, I've worked in software development for six or seven years now. It's understandable that there's bad code. But how does that get past QA? How does that get past uh, code, code collaborator or any sort of... Uh, typically, if somebody checks in code, another programmer takes a look at it and says, yeah, this makes sense. How does it, this is like literally, I, I don't know, I don't know, Will. Doesn't this feel like one of the top three problems that people are constantly complaining about with GTA Online is the loading time? Yeah. Uh, like, yeah. They, they know it's an issue. So how did nobody, I'm not going to say they never looked into it, but this from this guy, he's looking into it and he's like, yeah, this seems like a pretty obvious issue. And he's not even looking at the source code. He's looking at the reverse engineered code that he came up with. <laughs> based on profilers and sniffers etc it's just insane that this level of like inefficiency is in literally the greatest selling triple a game ever made and it's been there for seven years it's crazy it's insane yeah crazy story i oh that's to think you thought like that whole time i was like oh like internet connection is that a factor is like do i need to get a better graphics card yeah should i turn down the textures i'm sure some of that stuff helped but the fact that there is a set pretty much set amount of time that that always has to take because of that yeah is bonkers to me and i wonder if that's something they just didn't obviously 
maybe that person wasn't around when they were building Red Dead Two because it doesn't do that. It um, probably, it probably, yeah. I think, I think for me, this is really just a story of like process failure. Um, and it's, it's. I take it personally just because, like, like I said, I'm in software development. I'm just a, a QA test engineer, but I, I have to interact with these processes all the time, like code freeze, code lockdown, code collaboration, et cetera, unit testing, manual testing, automated testing, all that stuff. I don't know how this number one got through to production code. And number two, I don't know how it stayed in production code for seven years. It's just insane. That is a complete failure of the process. And honestly, the, the craziest thing to me is that the rest of the game is amazing. It's like the quality of the rest of the game is great. And yet somehow this trash, this obvious trash code has been in there for seven years. Yeah. It's like, how? How is that possible? You know, it's it, crazy. It, yeah. And if it's, I mean, I'm not saying it, it is an easy fix, but the fact that like nobody even looked into it that hard or closely yeah. is, is crazy. Um, yeah. And, and um, just to say, again, not a programmer, but the way this guy described it, it's a relatively easy fix. It's essentially changing how that process occurs to make it occur. 70% faster. He didn't even make huge changes to the game. He basically just changed how that list is compiled and created, etc. That's oof, that's crazy story. Great. Um I'm going to talk about a little bit how uh, so there were some patents that were discovered this week uh <laughs> for some Sony PSVR2 controllers. Um first of all, these look like I mean, I know they're patent drawings, so that the final product will look, look nothing like it's these. It's so good. But they look like uh, like jetpack controls from like a James Bond movie, or like <laughs> even like a flight stick. Like they're weird. I think it was on the Save Data Discord. Someone said it looked like Thanos's fist yeah. clenched. Uh, they got all these buttons all over them. So at, long story short, they're working on more. There's, I mean, they announced that they were working on a PS5 VR. Uh, they're working on VR stuff. They're making a new controller for it. Um, it was an application for the control apparatus and control program. And also in this was a banana. Uh, yeah. Images of yes. a banana seemingly the VR turning anything into a controller where it maps things onto the surface of another thing. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I just... I, this is actually... I, I saw some of the images and I thought it was just literally a stupid patent. But looking at this, some of the tech they're describing where essentially the uh, technology would recognize an object, know what it is, be able to track it, and then also project certain things onto it so that you can use the object as a controller as, or as some sort of sophisticated interface. Um, with the example <clears throat> being you're holding a banana, it knows you're holding a banana, and then it projects buttons on top of it using AR so then you can use it like a controller that's kind I mean, of crazy tech what can i say it's it's a controller with an appeal you know oh get off this show thank you everybody Gosh. good night oh um, boy it also seems like this other picture with the two bananas with a dotted line between them i i think what they're saying like if you scan one thing like the similar thing will also like it'll recognize quickly like it'll know the other like if Auto you have two two oh. similar things. No, it's no, it's saying two object controller. So the idea being, imagine if you you're holding two bananas and you go one is the bow and the other is the string on the bow. Oh, I see. Oh, fuck. So That's it's cool. that makes more yeah. sense. Yeah, but, but so the crazy thing is, I mean, I, I think this is kind of cool tech, but at the same time, Oculus with the Quest Two is already pushing pretty hard their hand detection, which kind of means like. Why do you even need controllers to represent a bow, for example, if you can just use your hands and detect the hands? Yeah. So this this patent, it kind of makes sense. But at the same time, it feels like Oculus is already beyond that by saying we don't really need you to even to hold anything anymore. Just use your hands. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. I wonder if they'll be able to scan hands and be like, hey, look at these are my hands. You scan are the those. controller. Which, yeah. No, I mean, that's, my body's that's the what... controller. No, that's what My Quest 2 does. Where... No, I'm, I'm saying I wonder if they're also working on that as well. I would assume so. Because if you're scanning oh, an object uh, and putting buttons on it, you could probably easily scan oh, for Sony. distinctive yeah. hands. They could. Um, yeah. I just, just want to... somebody to like make somebody's butt a controller and just like 
<gasps> while they play oh, on stream or something. Oh, penis controller. <clears throat> I just want to yep. thank Should the <laughs> the brave people at GameIndustry.biz for uh, the subhead of forget PlayStation. We want a plantain station, um, <clears throat> which I know was probably at one point the headline, and then someone said, we can't make that the headline. Please come up with something else. Um, which is Sony's controller tech is literally bananas. <clears throat> Another great headline. Uh, next up, I thought this was a cute little cute, cute story of if you lose your body in Valheim, there is a Valheim body you recovery lose your squad. body in real life. Yes. It's like, uh, it's like uh, the Matrix. <clears throat> is that the Matrix? I don't It's been a while. Uh, it's like Stargate SG-1. Um, Valheim's Body Stargate. Recovery Squad will help you get your items back for free. The BRS is a group in Valheim of Valheim players dedicated to helping other players recover their items. You die, you go to their community Discord, join a channel called Assistant Application, and type SOS. <clears throat> they will then join your game or server. Go get their, go. You ping your, your location, they will go get your items. I, I like when this sort of community run stuff pops up around games. Um, I think it's neat. <clears throat> would I trust these people? No. Uh, yes, I would. Uh, it's adorable. And I, I like, I mean, now that it's kind of more we, uh, public, I yeah. feel like people will get We almost needed them last night because we got white. Oh, yes. It was like Hard. almost 11 p.m., which is late for the Subpixel no, boys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We did an hour and 15 minute boat ride to fight a boss <laughs> and it just continued to unravel. And it was like 25 minutes from our home base. Ooh. And one person glitched and basically died because of that. Two other people died. And we were all just Ooh. like, oh, we're starting over. Good night. And wow. uh, it's not great. Yeah, I literally died. I said, I'm going to bed. And Ian goes, do they really kill you in one hit? Oh, I'm going to bed too. <laughs> we just locked yeah, that's, up. Oh, oh, <clears> yeah. And then I made a daring run uh, right like right before work this morning to uh, get all of our stuff back, which I took a raft. And I said to myself, there's no way the raft is that much slower than the second ship. It oh, no. is the slowest thing in oh, the no. entire world. Yep. And, oh, and I made it all the way over there, and I, I grabbed 10 fine wood to make a portal instead of 20. So I had to then run all the way back. Oh, yeah, it was great. Wow, it was great. Uh, but I got all of our stuff back and I got the ancient seas from Zach's body, and your body's still there. Oh, no, I picked it up. Oh, you picked it up? Ian picked it up. Uh, anyways, yeah. great community friendly story about a great game. Yes, totally love this stuff. Uh, going back to you, Ian, anything, anything um, else pop pop your fancy? Yeah, you know what? Let's just talk about it. We got to talk about the nintendo switch new model that uh mm. there's been rumors all sorts of stuff but bloomberg who is a pretty reliable source uh essentially came out and said hey we're getting a lot of behind the scenes information about this uh key headers seven inches still a 720p screen it will output at 4k and it will be an oled panel which i believe the switch is an lcd panel right that is so it'll be a little yes. bit a little bit brighter as an oled panel uh and they're planning to release it by the end of this year how are you guys feeling about this? I'm so fucking hyped for it, actually. Which is like weird because I I've never been like a mid cycle upgrade person. Mm -hmm. Um, I did get the Nintendo, th the new Nintendo 3DS XL, which is the worst fucking possible name. <laughs> I know, uh, right? But I did I did get that that upgrade. Uh, I'm actually pretty excited for this. I, I I joked in our Discord that oh this means I can play Breath of the Wild in 4K, so I'm gonna buy it. Uh, will very quickly pointed out that I should just play it on PC, which is a very good point. It's true because um, it will probably probably play better there. Uh, but that being said, like I just want to play games in bed. That's what I use my Switch for. It, it's yeah. a thing where like, but then that defeats the purpose of having it in 4K. There will be games I probably dock it for, but literally at this point, I dock it maybe just to play Ring Fit Adventure whenever I play that, um, which is like you know once every month. <laughs> um but it's i'm still excited to have that upgraded mobile experience with with the switch because i i love the switch so much it's it's yeah. such a great console I'm, I'm right there with you i i was okay with the switch performance for a while but then um playing Link's awakening which mm. had like a, a stutter chug 
Yeah. Um, and the thing is, it, it, the Switch is kind of weird because playing it in 720p on the handheld, the screen's far enough away from you where those performance issues, they're not super noticeable and it's running at a lower resolution. But mm -hmm. as soon as I put it on my TV, like the stutter becomes more obvious. Even playing a game like Hades on my TV, it does not scale up well um, mm -hmm. when it's docked. And, and it, the performance is still fine, but it's just like pixelated. And then seeing the latest uh, Pokemon Presents where they were showing a whole bunch of new games and mm. the art style and the performance was awful on all of them. Yeah. It was like, it was like, I think I saw more pixels than Pokemon in that entire presentation. Hey, it was got nice. them, folks. It was bad. It was bad. So I'm ready for not so much the 4K graphics, but the idea that this will finally bring to the Switch so it'll be able to run these games at higher than 24 frames per second. You know, I know that's an exaggeration, but... The Switch is a fantastic game, fantastic console with fantastic games. It just is definitely hitting a performance barrier, and I'm ready for it to push past that. Yeah, I definitely want to check. <clears throat> I mean, as someone who just, I bought, not just bought another Switch. I sold my old Switch and bought the Animal Crossing one. But I think it, when if this one comes out, I'll, I'll definitely consider maybe upgrading to it because that'd be nice. They, they were talking, I, I don't know if you mentioned this because I don't pay attention to you. Um, that with expanding the screen, they're just expanding into that bezel area, mm -hmm. I assume, and not actually making it any bigger. That makes sense, because that bezel is like a half inch on all sides. Yeah. yeah. Which I wonder if was intended to add that, but probably not. They're probably just trying to make it as teeny tiny as possible. But another thing I learned uh, is ta tangent here, but I didn't know Hades was cross-save on Switch yeah, and PC. PC. Because I bought it on PC and I still haven't played it, and I was like, ah, oh, I wish, kind of wish I got it on Switch. So I might also buy it on Switch, knowing that I can just have cross save between them. Still it's haven't good. played Hades. Still need to play it's Hades. Good on the it's I, um, I, I played it almost entirely on the Switch, and I I really liked it there. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. That's a smart idea. I'm a smart boy. Speaking of smart boys, Zach, what you got for me? Uh. I actually want to take a take a quick moment and talk about the uh, Hogwarts Legacy adding the, the the announcement this week, the leak that uh, Hogwarts Legacy will have uh, the ability to create trans player characters, which is exciting. Yeah, that's a that's a cool thing. You know, not many games have done that. Good on you, uh, Avalanche and Warner Brothers. Uh, this is very much. It feels like a salve to be like, hey, uh, just ignore the fact that J.K. Rowling is getting money for this and wrote this this franchise and uh, is an incredibly transphobic garbage woman. Uh, this episode sponsored by Kawasaki Motorcycles. Um, <laughs> uh -huh. But it just... <laughs> Baltimore County like... Track Racing, yo! <laughs> right outside it... my window! <laughs> Hashtag ad... It's like, Fast and the Furious. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, so. So last December, for the people not in the know, basically uh, this one woman Maya, I can't remember her last name, came out on Twitter and made this huge rant that was extremely transphobic, basically saying that you know there is a gender binary. And again, I, important to know, we're three white guys talking about video games, so I don't know. Maybe take what I'm saying with a grain of salt about this. But mm -hmm. like men and boys, men and boys are male. Women and girls are female. It is impossible to change sex. These were very, these were until very recently understood as a basic facts of life by almost everyone. Pretty fucking shitty statement. And obviously this person got dumpstered on. And then JK Rowling like subtweeted her and was like, no, this is, this is real. Women are under attack uh, because of the existence of trans people. And it just, it fucking sucks and it really puts a sour taste in everyone's mouth about liking yeah. Harry Potter because everybody does still. I, I, and then, what are you saying? Oh, I was just going to say, I, I understand having your own opinions. People are allowed to have own, your own opinions, but it's quite a hill to die on. Like, you can just say yeah. you have that opinion and move on. Like, She's I feel like a lot of Harry Potter fans. Like every Harry, month. Yeah. Like, Harry Potter fans have done that and, like, they're, they've accepted it, but she keeps bringing it up. And it's like, yep. 
what shut up about your stupid opinions <laughs> like and i and 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 i can't imagine what it feels like to just be a game developer working on this game because obviously at yeah. this point they've been working on it for i, I want to say like four four years or more because it was like what a year and a half ago we got the first like leaked footage of this game yeah uh and it was originally going to come out this year then they announced hey we're going to delay it till 2022 uh part of me does think that was to like obviously to work on the game, make it better, but like, you know, Hey, maybe, maybe in a year from now, JK Rowling won't have said some dumb shit for a year. So <laughs> people have forgotten to hate her and will buy our game. Um, there's also last week, the news that the, I think the lead producer on the game, lead designer, uh, is this guy named Troy Le- Leave or Levitt. Uh, he's a far right YouTuber or, or was, Woo! uh, and, like the, <laughs> somebody posted of a, 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 just like a screenshot of all of his different thumbnails and like, you know, some of them are just dumb. Like one is it's okay to be a gamer. And I'm like, okay, that's, that's kind of funny. <laughs> Gamers uh, are under attack, everybody. But but there are like some of these that are, are genuinely like, okay, these are kind of uh, uncomfortable and dangerous thoughts that real people do believe and do like push this narrative. Like there's one in praise of cultural appropriation. And I'm like, okay, okay. Uh, one, there's one thing are thought crimes becoming real no they're not you fucking idiot uh, <laughs> so so it, 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 this was leaked to i believe to bloomberg uh originally that they were including uh trans the option to have trans characters as, as player characters in the game and it does feel like this is somebody working on the game being like hey uh please please don't hate the game because we do we do genuinely care about this game and it sucks that we've gotten all this shitty press because of the shitty people that are like on the upper management of this game. But like we, we care and we're trying to make a good Harry Potter game and it sucks for them because I I, honestly, I would say even until like last month, I was kind of being like, I'll probably still buy this game. And now I'm kind of like, I probably won't because I I feel bad recon- reconciling that. I know it's a personal choice for everybody and I'm not saying you should or shouldn't buy this game, but it is, it it's a tough conversation and the further and further we get into it, the more I'm kind of like, okay, this, what, what is, what is the right thing to do here? Yeah. Um, I mean, as far as like, I, I think uh, the reasoning aside, I think for an open world, not an open world game, but a care, a, a game in which you're creating a character that is wholly your own and not some named NP or named character, part of a story or something like that. Like those options should all be there by default Mm -hmm. like just Mm -hmm. make them like do whatever you want with your character make them whatever you want and don't make it pandering like don't make your characters all of a sudden Mm -hmm. one one sex or one sexuality because you Mm -hmm. think it'll bring you praise or you think it'll do like just make your characters your characters and then if you're gonna have a character creator uh like Make it as open as possible to don't like, don't tie your gender to your voice. Uh, yeah, sort of <laughs> like like think about your mm-hmm. game, and then and if you have to make it one way or the other, then clearly explain it and not be like, mm. oh, Doom guy can't be a girl. That's why uh, she can't be a girl or like stuff like that. Like you don't have to come up with a dumb excuse. You can just say your excuse. But people like I'm not saying people are afraid to say that, but a lot of people are afraid to be called out when they're just making a creative decision off the whim. They're not trying to be hurtful Mm -hmm. versus when people are trying to include things to boost their sales numbers. Totally. We, I mean, we've, we've come a long way from like, uh, I think it was Ubisoft saying they couldn't make, uh, like a female character model because it would increase their workload by a ludicrous amount. And I'm not saying that that isn't somewhat true, but like, there there was it was i can't remember exactly how they worded it but it was bad and they got drugged through the mud for it deservedly and like i i think the escape from tarkov guys also did something like that a few years ago and it's just like it's 2021 like just be better and and it sucks again for the developers of this game it fucking sucks because they're working on a project that is gonna get hated gonna get lambasted for reasons that are not their fault yeah and so it it it's a shitty situation for everybody. Yeah. And it's like, I get it. Ubisoft and Tarkov guys, but you can also just be like, Hey, we just don't yeah, like, you're allowed to say you don't want to, or you're allowed to say, Hey, we'll look into it. Like mm-hmm. those are two perfectly fine options. You don't have to like, 
immediately i mean in this in a lot of culture you want to immediately justify yourself but i feel like you should be able to be like hey we just we honestly never thought about it so here's here's our reasoning um mm -hmm. yeah that stuff's crazy but i'm i'm glad they're including it even if it could be for like newsworthy reasons but that's mm -hmm. cool i i want i want anyone to be included in this harry potter game because it genuinely sounds like fun and i want to play it just release it yeah it really sounds access. like a step in the right direction for a game that keeps getting bad press so it's good to hear that yeah mm. uh wrapping it up here i was just gonna shout out one more story that has been ongoing which is the sinking city developer frogwares and their publisher nacon uh they've been having this i feel like this this happened last year as well is when this really first started because mm -hmm. I remember early that they had like taken it, taken it down. It was only on their website. And so now they've been having this tiff with their game, The Sinking City. And now Frogwares has accused the former licensee, who is Nacon, of pirating the game and putting it up onto Steam without their original developer permissions. There's a lot of backstory to this, so feel free to go read up on it. There's a lot of fighting between these guys. They like there was the originally originally the publisher saying they weren't paying the licensing fee and then the licensor saying they weren't paying the publishing fee and blah blah blah. blah. Anyways, the funny thing that I like to laugh at now <laughs> is that Frogwares used Steam's DMCA takedown to take down the game off of Steam. Yes. <laughs> which is very funny to me because that's like, I don't know, it just seems so like, not back alley, but like, yeah, we're going to use well, the system against the man. Earlier, that's like one of the very few instances of the DMCA being used appropriately. <laughs> right, it's crazy. Earlier this week, the because because the the version that was put up on Steam was like the publisher had done something to like hack the actual file like code to the game, altered it slightly, and then put it up on Steam, and they were getting the money from it. But somehow the developers could actually change the Steam page still, and so they mm -hmm. wrote in like the description like "Do not buy this game on Steam. We don't get money from yeah. this. Instead, here's a link to our website where you can buy the game there. Please do it there," which is the most like. Can you imagine going to a fucking page for a game and being like, don't buy the game. Just don't. <laughs> Please. Don't buy this game. It's the most fucking wild wow. shit. Yeah, they it's were crazy. saying that their legal battle began it, with Big Ben and Nacon in August of 2019. I think that's what I'm remembering. Because there were a bunch of things with their Sherlock games, which I yes. played one of those games. And despite having weird graphics problems sometimes, genuinely pretty fun game. Um, hmm. I've wanted to try The Sinking City. I can't remember if it's on game pass or if that's that's the cthulhu one i keep thinking is the sinking city but it's a different game there's yeah there was like two cthulhu -y looking games that came out around the same time i can't remember yeah i think i'm thinking of the wrong game anyways i i want to play the sinking city um frogwares they do a good job with what they do uh i but i just want to throw that out there before we end here because i think i think it's just really funny it's a um, wild story. It's just, um, yeah. it's just every day there's a different update. And, and it's public. Um, the whole thing's public. Yeah. Which is crazy. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we don't often talk about rumors on the show because it just started. But uh, there was Elden Ring footage that leaked. I didn't look at it. I did see a GIF or two, but I was just like, it's literally shot at a weird angle and it has a bunch mm -hmm. of uh, do not. Yeah reproduce things all over it. I'm like, I'm just going to wait for the trailer. Yeah. It's um, very low quality. Um, I do have one spoiler that was obvious in the trailer. Horseback riding? Horseback riding. Yes. That's that's the only thing I gleaned that was like, oh, that's big. That's yeah. big. Also, here's the thing, though. I, uh, sorry. I, no, you go. Uh, for me, because I, I do really like Sekiro. Like, the combat in Sekiro feels great. The stealth sections of Sekiro kind of feel a little like eh, we we got halfway to a good stealth mechanic system and we like that that's how we're running with it i i am worried that this will kind of be the same thing where like the game has great combat that's like what people are going to go to it for but like i hope that the the horseback riding if there if it is like a major part of the game 
isn't just like kind of tacked on. Like if if it's a thing like Shadow of the Colossus where you really just use the horse to get to the the arenas, thing fine. But like, I in in reality, how much do you really need to make good horse a ho- good horseback system? That's up for debate. But honestly, yeah. But when it works, I it, it works. works. I played more terrible horses than I have good horses. Like I agree with that. Red, Red Dead yeah. Two horse is really good because you can do that. You can do that tight circle thing with a horse before running off yeah. that you like see in movies and stuff. And mm-hmm. I, I was playing. Uh, there's another game with horseback riding, and it didn't have that. Mountain, and I was like, this Mountain. game is bad. Oh, Mountain Blade, great horse. Yeah, great horse feel. Uh, horse I can remember... take a couch lance. <laughs> I remember in um, Ghost of Tsushima. I like jumped off a cliff to try and land on my horse and it, it doesn't, I, I think I'm remembering this right. It doesn't have a system to like land on your, you have to like be standing next to the horse and like push the button oh. to get onto it. And I like that fucking made me so sad. Cause I'm like, just, I understand how difficult that would probably be to program. Yeah. But the satisfaction of jumping onto your horse's back is so good. It's good. I, I, and, they, and they have a skill to leap off of your horse. Oh yeah. They don't have, <laughs> A way to yeah. land on the horse. So I, I realize it's a meme, and that's probably mostly a meme. But people freaking out, like, "Oh, Elden Ring doesn't exist anymore," just because they don't talk about it, is it got very annoying. And also, the people are saying, "Like, oh, I'm glad it leaked. Like, they deserve Those to have it leaked." And I'm like, Excuse, what, what, "What do you mean? You're glad?" They're like, "It's been in development for three years. I'm glad it leaked." I'm like, "Dude, don't even, don't even." Yeah. You have, um, you have shitty opinions. Yeah. <laughs> Folks, I, that's going to be it for this lovely, lovely episode of Local Chat. Unless you folks have any more news you want to talk about. Uh, shout out to, to RK fan in the chat who was trying to get uh, a steak and shake. And unfortunately, their shake machine is closed down. So he, he's now going to McDonald's. No. Tragedy. Oh, no. man. There's so much happening in our chat. And I don't even I check it anymore. Shout out to Nathan. Uh, What's up, RK Nathan? Fan. Also, also says you can land on your horse in Breath of the Wild, which again is why that game is a ten out of ten. So, oh, we got to give Zach points like in 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 their show. Man, I see. I tend not to look at chat during this because it it goes up as a podcast, and I don't want to be like, oh, I'm looking at chat during the podcast. No, I I, I get like some other shows do. So you know, it's just like I didn't want to do it. But chat, I love you. I man, I'm just so happy to see everyone there. Ugh, ugh. Okay, I'm gonna start the music, and we're gonna do this little outro. Folks, wait, 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 Will, do you do, do you hear something? Oh, no, don't it? do this to me. It sounds. Don't do this to me. It's, it's like it's like the pitter patter of a bunch of. No, IP? no, it isn't. <gasps> it you, can't be. Don't have it. No, I could. It be? Oh, wait, <laughs> give me 10 seconds. I'll let you know if it comes up to the same feed because I still have it. Yeah, up. same, same. I'm waving. I think we're live. We're back on. Folks. Folks. Are we? Oh, there's the YouTube. Uh, we are. We are. We are. It looks um, like. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> I went to add something to my OBS. And... No, no, no. That's not what happened. What happened was <laughs> a wild pack of some kind of unidentified animal creature uh, oh. came in and knocked down all of your recording equipment. It was <laughs> crazy. It sounds like we have something big on our hands here. What? Why is it not playing? <laughs> no! There it is! Oh, they're back! They're everywhere! Watch out! It's oh, Wooper no. Watch! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, oh, oh my God, they're everywhere! <laughs> oh. oh, man. Oh, my God. <laughs> I hate this show. Folks, I'm sorry that I, I can't, made you do that. I can't believe it crashed. <laughs> oh man, this is gonna be fun to edit for the podcast. Folks, sorry. Oh, oh, I'm, I might have to re-upload a different version onto uh, YouTube. <laughs> I should have been recording. Oh, Actually, works. I would have lost it. Folks, I'm gonna play the outro music here. Um Thanks for tuning in, everybody. You know. It was a pretty good time. Zach, thank you, as always, for joining us for your very first time. Uh, do you want to plug your sweet, sweet save data? 
Yeah. Uh, so conveniently, we rebranded uh, two months ago now, and all of our channels are the same. So just anywhere you want to go to, it is Save Data Team. That's YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Patreon, and now TikTok at Save Data Team. So uh, go check us out there. We've got a lot of uh, fun stuff, video essays about games, very similar to what. Uh, Seth does. Whooper watch again. Oh, my <laughs> oh God. it was there. It was there. Folks, thank you for tuning in. Ian, I love you. At Think Gibson on Twitter. You can check him out. I don't know why I'm talking so fast. We got time on this song. Folks, um, we are Subpixel. You can check out all of our stuff at subpixelfilms.com. That'll bring you straight to our YouTube channel where you can check out delicious archives of past shows, including Will's first JRPG or perhaps even Ian's Roblox video that came out this past Monday. It was very good. Also, check out our Subpixel Shorts channel. Uh, that's where we post shorts. great TikToks and all sorts of stuff. It's very fun. It's a good time. Oh my god, folks, they're back. It's oh, no. Super Oh my god. Oh no. Oh. I love it. I love it. Oh, they're in the news one too, because I accidentally put them there. Yep. Oh well, folks, I'm gonna let the song play out, but thank you for watching. Thank you, everyone in the chat. Thank you, everyone who's listening on the podcast. Thank you, Zach, for joining us, and we will see you all next week.